edition of Sports Talk Live. I'm Stephanie Olson. I'm Avery Neville. And I'm Murphy Hrachek. Let's just get everything started right away. We have lots to talk about. Uh, March Madness just occurred and it's still happening. Uh, there's a lot going on. So what, what stood out to you guys in the first two rounds? Well, I mean, clearly the Lehigh and Duke game is one that we can talk about a lot. That was clearly a big upset. Um, and Norfolk State won two. I would say those are the two big games of the upsets and stuff. I don't know. What would you say? Well, leaving the upsets out of the conversation for now, um, I would just have to be happy that the first seeds are still alive. Michigan State, Kentucky, Syracuse, North Carolina. I'm just happy to see them to see them move on because I know that they're going to dominate the rest of this, at least in my opinion. We'll see what happens. Um, are there any games that kind of caught you by surprise? Not necessarily upsets, but just teams that you thought would win but didn't. I mean, I'll, ta I'll talk first. I mean, UConn, after winning the national championship last year and coming back without their starting point guard, I mean, I thought Lamb would step up and just be the player that he was last season, and he, he was just off the whole time. Um, they lost to Iowa State by 13 points, and that, that was kind of a – kind of a downfall for me. Um, any teams that you didn't think would really get this far, not upsets, but like seven or six seeds that you thought would not be here? Um, not really for me. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. I guess it's still kind of early in it, but I don't think I have any yet that I would say no. Do you? It's still fairly early in, yeah. the, in, in it, so I would say maybe Cincinnati, maybe Florida. I'm, I'm pretty excited yeah. about that just to see them this far, but as far as um, – being completely surprised by them, no, not too terribly much. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Florida. Um, they they whipped on uh, Virginia. That was the number ten seed. They're the number seven seed, but they really didn't have any competition besides Virginia. Uh, they had Norfolk State, and they they beat them by 34 points. But um, also, Florida State kind of disappointed me. Yeah, I agree. Um, they they barely won their first round to the number 14 team, and then. They came back and lost to Cincy by like six points. I mean, after after that they beat some big teams during the season, and they come back and they don't show up in the tournament. I mean, it's a little disappointment since they're a three seed, the third seed. All right. Now, since we talked about just uh, just a little recap, um, we're gonna head on to the upset. So Avery, why don't you tell us some All right. big upsets? Well, the Lehigh and Duke game, like I mentioned before. Um, I don't know. I'm happy for the I, I always root for the underdogs. I think Duke has kind of been highly overrated. They, I mean, they've always constantly underachieved by reaching the Sweet 16, except for their national championship in 2010. But um, I'm happy for Lehigh. I mean, they're out of it now, but it was good while it lasted, I think, for them. Um, and they both lost, respectively, to Florida. Um, and then Norfolk State, too. Um, I would say those are the two big upsets, though. What about you? Hmm. I would say the same for the two big upsets. I, before this season, I had never really watched any um, college basketball at all, but apparently the games that I did watch were just phenomenal. Um, two seeds getting knocked off by their 15-seed opponents. It was just incredible. Um, I, just, I found a tweet from a, a Virginia, Vir, Virginia Senator, Mark Warner. He said, Virginia is for founding fathers and dangerous NCAA attorney underdogs. So there's a lot of pride there with the two underdogs coming BCU out. BCU also. You have to, that's probably what he meant also. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, those two are a huge upset since there's only been five times that uh, 15 seed has ever beat a two seed. But I think that NC State, uh, their run is pretty big. Um, in their tournament play, uh, in their conference play, they almost beat uh, UNC. So I was looking out for them. Um, they beat South Dakota State University by 14 points. And, I, I mean, they're shooting well. They have some great players. Um, Howell, he had 22 points in that game. So... And they also beat Georgetown, but Georgetown was, I think, was very high seed for what they were. I mean, they, they didn't play good all year. And also, when Ohio beat Michigan, I mean, I like to see my Big Ten teams win. And when they lost, I was a little upset, but Ohio's repping pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right, so now we're talking about upsets, but now we want to predict the future. So, Elite Eight, who do you think is going to make it? Um, I don't know. I've, I have my top four. For my top four, I have Ohio, Kentucky, Marquette, North Carolina. Um, I'm definitely rooting for North Carolina. I think they could definitely make some noise. Um, and I think Kentucky will be in the championship with them too. But Elite Eight, I'm not really positive on that. My bracket's all messed up. So, yeah. What about you? I would have to say just looking far forward to uh, Thursday and Friday, 
Um, I would love to see Wisconsin win against Syracuse, but I don't see that happening. It never hurts to dream, though. Um, I have Michigan State over Louisville, um, Ohio State over Cincinnati, and then Marquette over Florida. So I'm basically just following it. Mm -hmm. um, and then on Friday, I have Kentucky over Indiana, and I expect Kent Kentucky to go very, very far. Um, probably my favorite team. Um, and then Kansas over North Carolina State, North Carolina over Ohio, and then Baylor over Xavier. All right, but Kentucky over Indiana. Um, Indiana actually beat Kentucky this season. Three-point shot, buzzer beater. Do you think they? Do you think Indiana has a chance at all? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they have Zeller, who's like Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Do you it's think true. he can he can make a run? Anthony Davis was in foul trouble the whole time. It's true. Hopefully, they can step it up. Um, I'm just looking forward to a slugfest. I think it's going to be a really close one. I mean, Kentucky, I don't think they, they, they're very young. I mean, they're great players, but um, they're inexperienced. They only have two seniors, two juniors, three sophomores, and six freshmen. I mean, do you think the, I think the nerves are going to shake a little bit there. Um, Baylor, I have them beating Xavier. It's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be a really close game. Um, Wisconsin, I have them, I have them beating Syracuse. I mean, without Fab Mello. They're big, they're big dog who get rebounds. He, without him, I mean, they're going to be lost. I mean, UNC, I mean, Asheville almost beat Syracuse, so who knows what can happen. This is, it's the tournament. Fair, you mm -hmm. never know what's going to yeah. happen. Um, yeah, so wh why don't you think Wisconsin can win? Oh, I didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> I, I'm just thinking that, um, I was just thinking, like, Syracuse, I don't want to say they've been on fire, but they're just definitely a solid team. I think they're more well-rounded. Um, and they have better depth, but Wisconsin, I just want to see him win. I, I guess when it just comes down to it, I'm just looking at the stats and the numbers so far. Like Syracuse might be ranked a little too high, but I think that they're, I think they're right where they should be. How awesome would it be to see Marquette and Wisconsin in the final? Oh, I think, be magic. Yeah. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? All right, championship game. Who do you have in the championship game? Oh, I have Kentucky and North Carolina. And who do you think is going to win the whole thing? I think North Carolina. What about you? I have Kentucky and North Carolina, but I think Kentucky's going to take it so, this year. So no underdogs? No underdogs? Not nah, in the no. championship. Cinderella yeah. stories. No, it's for the elite I don't this think year. So. I, I think, think Marquette will make it to the top I, four, though. Do you think NC State can actually be a, like further their Cinderella story and beat Kansas? Hmm. No? I don't believe so. No. You don't think no, so? I, <laughs> I don't I mean, think so. I, I do. I absolutely think so. And also, um, Ohio. Ohio is represented very well in this uh, tournament. They have Ohio, they have Ohio State. I mean, do you think they can have someone in the championship game also? You don't think Ohio State can be in the championship game? Oh, I didn't, I think I didn't say that. I, I don't know. I <laughs> yeah, I think they could. <laughs> it's always a possibility. Who do you have in the championship? I have Wisconsin and Michigan State. I'd like, to see, I'd like to see a redo. All right, well, let's take a break and look at those adorable pets. This is Bear. He is a very calm 11-year-old Shepherd Cross. Don't let his age fool you. He still has a lot of energy left in him and is very playful. Here we have Murphy, a 5-year-old gray and white cat with bright green eyes. She is very friendly and social. Gimli is a brown and black striped cat who is only 1 to 2 years old. He is a little shy at first, but playful once you get to know him. Here's Jeeves, a rat terrier and chihuahua mix, who is seven years old. His colors are black, white, and brown, and he is very quiet. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Again, the number for the Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014. All right, staying, we're staying on the court, and we're just going to go right into NBA. 